let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Alright, um a few things I wanna capitalize on. Rap. Rap game. Future of rap. Future of what you should do as an artist. I'm gonna break some things down to y'all on what I do as an artist or whatever you want to consider myself. So one thing one thing I stopped doing a long time ago is considering myself a rapper. I don't never want to be looked at as a rapper because I'm not a rapper. I never want to be looked at as nothing. Like I want people to just be like, that's a daylight. Right? I don't never want people to be like, oh, he's this or he's that. Or you. I want people to be like, yo, that's a daylight. Right? That right there is a daylight, and he's like in a thing of his own, right? So, few advice that I want to give to my up and coming following and the people that's like, the people that look at me for musical inspiration, stuff like that. So here's some advice that I want to give to y'all, right? So, whenever I go into the studio, and the beat comes on the first thing I tell myself is how could I fix somebody I try to go into the minds of the listener and my first thing is how could I fix somebody that's listening to this I don't never really care about subject matter I mean I don't really care about what y'all talking about on the song I don't really care about like what the hook of the song is I don't care about none of that my objective is if I have an opportunity to use my voice and I know that there's going to be people listening, what could I do to better you? Right. So when I hear beats or I hear music or I hear stuff like that, I never hear like, like one thing I noticed, wait, before I get to that, one thing I noticed is when I'm in the studios with some rappers, when the beat come on, they be in their mind, they be thinking, I'm gonna make a hit record. Like this is the average rapper idea ideology. I'm gonna make a dope record, hopefully a dope project, and I'm gonna go on tour with this record, and I'm gonna do that until this album run a little dry, and then I'm gonna make another one and do it over and 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 over for eternity. Make an album, drop a few singles. His fan base is going to agree with whatever it is. That's the thing. When you get a fan base, they'll just agree with whatever you put out. That's the sad part about getting a fan base. Like, you can build a fan base that's totally, totally uh, dependent on cock riding. Like, they'll just say anything is dope. Like, they won't tell you the truth. And that's why I like real hip hop fans because hip hop fans will really tell you, like, yo. That album wasn't it. That's why I love real hip hop fans, cause they'll tell you, like they'll they'll finally they to tell you flat out, yo he was dope. That all the other albums, but that last album he put out that shit was that wasn't it. They'll tell you flat out. You would know better. Like okay, I can't try that no more. They they ain't fuck. They'll tell you in the hip hop fan tell you the heartbeat. Nigga, that album wasn't it. I'm not that. That ain't it, right? I tell you ASAP. But um, you know, so that that be the mind state, right? Like, drop a project, say anything on the project. You already got a follow in the fan base. Put it out. They gonna eat it up regardless. Once you get millions of views, you gonna always get millions of views. It ain't. Plus the machines that's behind certain shit. You know, record labels make sure your shit get pushed to certain websites. Everybody can go, yada, 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 boom. But for me, right, when I go into the studio or I go into a perspective to make a music, a song or whatnot, like, I don't give a fuck who beat it is. I don't give a fuck who featured it is. I don't give a fuck what you talking about. I'm in my own world and I'm going to say something that Daylight was saying. So when you... 
put out a record that goes, Daylight is features on this. I want to create, okay, we don't care what the song is about. When Daylight Verse comes up, we going into Daylight World. That's kind of where I where I met with like doing features and doing music in general. Like when I when I'm on whoever shit, like when when it when my part of the verse come up, yo, welcome to Daylight World. Like we don't give a fuck if it's a club song, nigga. None of that matters no more. Nigga, the hook could be pop that pussy on a strip pole with a thousand dollars. Nigga, get gold. Nigga, gold chains. Nigga, gold watch. I'm a lost nigga. I ain't never doing nothing right with my life. Nigga, when I get on the song and my verse come on, I never been in the strip club. It ain't good for you. Girls, go out and learn who you really are. Become a black queen. Bitch, I'm going to go against everything you talking about. I don't give a fuck. Fuck with fuck you. I'm gonna go. I don't give a fuck what the hook is about. I'm going against everything you was talking about. Everything. Take my verse off. All I care. I don't care. You already paid me. I already spent all of that. Take my verse off. I don't care. You can clearly take my verse off the record. I don't care. I already got paid. But no, that like that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't be caring. Like, I don't, man, I don't be caring what you talking about on your song. If you want me on it, that's why I went. Look, when I, you ever been in the in a, a studio session with a bunch of niggas and the beat come on, and niggas be like, "Yo, what we rapping about, nigga? I ain't rapping about nothing. What y'all rapping about, bitch? I'm gonna be in my own world. I don't give a fuck. It don't matter what the subject is about, bitch. This what I'm about." It don't matter what all of y'all talking about. This is what I want to say. It's what I'm going to say. And it's going on there. I don't care what you got, oh, man. I don't care what you're talking about. This is what I want to say to the, my fans that's listening, and I'm going to say it. So that's how it should be for all artists, right? All artists that, all artists that go in the studio, and even if you hear like a super turn up beat, a super crunk beat, super super popping beat, whatever, that don't mean you gotta conform. You hear a super turn up beat, super lit beat, the beat that had you in it, you don't gotta conform to that beat. Fuck that beat, nigga. Get on there and say what you gonna say. Say some real shit. I don't give a bro. I don't even want to say say some real shit because y'all niggas don't even know what real shit y'all don't even know what real shit is. The word real has been completely misconstrued nowadays. Like it's backwards. Like I don't I don't I don't, I don't even want, I don't even like using the word real no more. I don't want to all the niggas that's quote unquote real, I don't be nothing like them. Nothing. Nothing. All the quote unquote niggas that really take pride in being a real nigga, I don't wanna be nothing like them. Nothing. So I, I don't even wanna use that word real no more. I take that out of my vocabulary. That shit gotta go. Right? But when I say real shit, I mean like some R real shit. Like some shit that could really alter the minds of the listeners. Some shit that could have the listener thinking on a higher, different, like a complete different frequency or a whole nother perspective. Like, that's the shit I be talking about when I say real, right? Uh, everybody keep asking me about Schoolboy album. I haven't listened to Schoolboy album. I'm going to state this for the hundredth of ninetieth time. I haven't listened to Schoolboy album yet. I haven't. And I tell y'all this all the time. And it's like y'all don't be hearing me when I tell y'all this. I only feed my mind what can make me grow mentally and physically. I haven't listened to Schoolboy album. And I'm I don't think I'm going to listen to it unless somebody tells me, yo, Schoolboy was dropping some knowledge on one of them records. Then I'm gonna go listen to the whole project. But other than that, I like I heard the single. I heard the single. And when I heard the single, I was like, I'm not on that. That's not what I'm on. 
So I can't, I refuse to listen to it. That's not what I'm on. Based off the single, that's not, that's not where I'm at mentally. So I can't, I can't tap into that because that's not where I'm at. So based off the single, I haven't, I haven't dove into the project. Uh, I heard a lot of people say it was a dope project. I heard a lot of people say it was fire. The beats was banging. Um, I'm more content based, right? Me, I'm waiting on the new Ab Soul. I've been in Ab Soul. I've been in the studio session with Ab Soul. Remind y'all, Ab Soul is working on his next project and I've heard some madness. I've been in the lab with Ab Soul for multiple sessions, as y'all can see. Every time I post a video of it, Interscope or whatever, I'm in a session with Soul. And that's what I'm waiting on. That type of shit. When I'm in the lab listening to Soul, it sparked my mind. And that's where I'm at with music. That's where I'm at with just stuff in general. Like, if it can't make me grow mentally and physically, I don't really plan on digesting it verbally or, or nothing. I don't really care. Like, I'm at the point to where I want to listen to things that can make me grow mentally and physically. So, listening to solo new shit, that's what I'm waiting on. Right? Uh... I'm a big Ab Soul fan just as well as I am a friend with Ab Soul. I am a fan. I'm a fan based off the simple fact that I love what Ab Soul talks about. And Ab Soul does not give a fuck about the higher ups and all the extra shit. He gonna say what the fuck he gotta say. And he's not gonna conform to all the fucking radio shit that everybody else conform to. So big up, big ups to Ab Soul. Also, I'm excited to see what Joey Badass is gonna do next. I'm excited to see what, you know, Killer Mike and David Banner, David Banner God Box 2 is on the way. Like, these are things that I'm completely excited to hear. Right? God Box 1, if y'all haven't heard David Banner God Box 1, you tripping. You've been listening to too much Lil Pump or one of these niggas. If you haven't heard David Banner God Box album, then you missing out on a lot. You missing out on a lot, lot. Right? I fucks with Kevin Gates as a speaker. I like what he says in his interviews. I like what Kevin Gates stand for, right? He's Muslim. I like his his pride. I like what he stand for. I don't really listen to Kevin Gates music, but I like what he stand for, right? Um uh I think he's a very stand-up individual, right? But like I said, going back to David Banner Oh, I'm most definitely waiting on Punch new album. That shit. Listen to me. Listen to me. TDE Punch is going in niggas top fives when this project drop. Listen to me. TDE Punch is going in niggas top five when this album drop. I'm going to say this loud and clear. Punch is the nicest nigga at TD. I'm going to say this loud and clear. Punch is the best artist at TD. Best. He's the best. What? He's the best. Punch is literally all of them combined. He like the Captain Planet of TD. He the Captain Planet, bro. He's just as conscious as Absol. He raps just as good. He's he's more slow paced like Schoolboy. He a blood like J Rock, and he can most definitely put just as many words together as Kendrick. No, this Punch first album. This Punch first album. He got a lot to learn. He's still learning how to do the hi 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 for hi hi for. He's still learning how to do that. You don't get that. You gotta be, you gotta do multiple albums to get that thing that Kendrick got. Kendrick tapped into another thing. You feel me? He tapped into a whole another thing. When you get uh plant surprises and all that, oh, you in a whole another realm. You oh man, when you what's that shit called? Plet, pletzer, pretzel, pretzel. When you get into pretzel things, oh, you in a whole another realm. Five, five, four, five, five, four. When you get in the high five fours, you in a whole nother realm. You can't even talk to him about music no more. Kendrick, 
Kendrick Kendrick didn't got a they didn't gave him a tesseract. Kendrick going to the studio. Let me get two shots of tesseract. Let me get a um one tesseract, uh, a soul stone. Uh yeah. That'd be it. How much is that? Man, Kendrick on the whole no Kendrick ain't with us no more. Kendrick ain't with us no more, bro. He ain't he ain't with like at first he was with the rapper things. You know when he was when he when he did the shit on control and he was with Big Sean and all that, he was still in the rapper thing. But after he got his press prize, his Pulitzer Prize, whatever that's called, after he got that, oh, he gone. He ain't with us no more. He went to a whole nother galaxy. He in a whole nother nebula. He, he ain't with us. He ain't with the rapper things no more. He out of here. He learned how to do a thing none of us could do. You, you don't look, my nigga. You don't be hearing Kendrick voice. That shit don't sound human no more. Kendrick is in demigod mode. You be hearing his voice. That ain't him, man. That shit sound like a, a Decepticon or some shit. That shit sound like Optimus Prime. You know how it sound like multiple voices? Like, that ain't him, man. He ain't him. He in the God thing. Kendrick went to the God thing. He ain't human no more. That You can't just, he in Lucy mode, like for real, for real. Like I was talking to Punch, cause I'm like, yo Punch, like how it be when Kendrick be recording? He was like, man, died on some other shit, man. Like, like that nigga on some Mozart type shit. Like the way he hear his voice, then he go in there and stack. And then, I'm like, what? Cause you know, regular rappers, nigga, we write some shit. We go in the studio, nigga, we go in the booth. Hey, cut my headphones up. All right, run that shit. Wham, nigga, the boop, boop, pop, 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 boop, pop, pop, wham, wham, doo, doo, tap, bam, 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 bam. You feel me? We going and we letting it have it. We running it. Boom, right? When we get out the booth, nigga, that's it. You know, hey, let me do some doubles, some ad libs. You feel me? We good. You feel me? You might do a few doubles, few ad libs. You good. He said, Kendrick, oh, my God, one verse going to take a whole studio session. He got to do, he, he, he said Kendrick a master of his words. Like, like if he don't like a, the way a word sound, just one sound, like he'll make sure, like he was telling me all type of, this is mute. All right, so look, Kendrick is no longer a rapper. He's a composer, right? Right? He's no longer a rapper. He's a musical composer, bro. There's a difference. I haven't got to that level yet. I, I am still a baby rapper. Like, right? Like, if I had to consider myself a person, I would consider myself Jack Jack. I've said this numerous times. I would consider myself Jack Jack from Incredibles on the musical scale. I have so many different powers, but I'm still a baby on the musical scale. Kendrick is a composer, bro. He's no longer a rapper. He's a composer, right? The way his voice sounds on music, on tracks, my nigga, you can't just learn how to do that, bro. You got to tap into something else. You can't, the, the shit Kendrick do on tracks, bro, you can't just, you can't just go in the studio and do that, bro. You can't. No, you got to tap into something else, bro. And that's why I fuck with Kendrick, bro. Like, I fuck with a lot of, I fuck with, like, like I fuck with a lot of the shit he be doing and when, when I be hearing Kendrick, won't me tell you when I knew Kendrick was somewhere else? When he did Pimp a Butterfly. A lot of people didn't like Pimp a Butterfly because it was it was it was composing. People ain't like Pimp the Butterfly because it was it was music it was sonically ridiculous bro. it was sonic we're talking about we're not talking about bitch don't kill my vibe we're not talking about damn but the bet that but that but that but that but we ain't talking about none of that we talking about 
my nigga musically from a jazz standpoint from the instruments he used from the way he maneuvered his voice in and out the instruments sonically sonically my nigga pimp a butterfly is amazing bro that shit was um, sonically it was amazing bro but it was too much for the general consumers it was too much for you know all those other niggas you know the non-black niggas it was too much for them too much jazz right it's, it was too jazzy for the non-black niggas and you know non-black niggas don't really have soul like that so they can't really relate to soulful music and then if the higher ups is pumping the shit then they and it don't apply to them then they not gonna really get behind it so Kendrick is most definitely in uh he's in a Mozart state right now right He's in a Mozart state right now, and that's what I like about Kendrick. He's in a super Mozart state. Uh, uh, but yeah, going back to what I was saying, right? Like, as an artist, like, as an up and coming artist that is inspired by me or is inspired by Abso, Kendrick Lamar, or anyone, Lupe's, or any one of those people who push you to be a lyrically better artist or push you to, to be a more, as you would say, typical conscious artist, right? I would say don't never let a beat tell you what to do right don't don't ever let a beat tell you what to do right Anderson Pack is another one of them niggas he another one of them Mozart type niggas like Anderson Pack is another one of them created player ass niggas that's musically wild right but yeah, don't going back to what I was saying. Don't never let a beat, don't never let a beat tell you what to do. Right? When somebody cut a beat on, don't listen to the beat as in how you could bob your head. Instead of listening to what you like, listening to this gonna sound crazy, my nigga, because an OG nigga told me this. Don't listen to what you like, listen to what you can't hear. I was like, wait, what? The nigga said, listen to what you can't hear. And I never understood what he was talking about until I got to the lyrical state I am now. And what that is, for me, I listen to what I can't hear. So when I break down the beat, I go, okay, the kicks come on the one, boom. Kick always come on the one, boom. The snares normally come on the two, boom, two. So that's one two so it's boom clap boom clap right so i start and then the hi-hats normally come one two three four so one two three four two one wait one two three four two one two three four three one two so the snares is normally t -t 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 -t. so he said listen to what you don't hear so what i try to do is i try to listen to all the spaces in between like where's there not a snare where's there not a hi-hat where's there where does the instruments go down and what I do, when I listen to those holes, I go like this, boom, 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 right? I find them, right? I find all the pockets, and that's where I base my rap plat, my rap pattern, right? Pockets, boom, 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 boom. So I'm more like this. I'm more where I'm at right now as a as a artist. I'm more into finding those crevices, boom. Finding those crevices, figuring out how I can manipulate the beat, how I can bend time in the beat, how I can slow down reality, how I can change the perspective of the mind even while listening to the song. Boom, 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 boom. Right? So I'm finding those pockets. That's just where I'm at now. Like I told you, I've only been doing music seriously for two years. I dropped my first project two years ago, almost two years ago. And then I just dropped a few more projects recently, but they're just all trial and error projects, right? They're pretty dope, but they're still trial and error projects. I'm still finding things inside of my skill set, vocal and fluctuation, ups, downs, lowers, how to bring emotion into my verse, how to, how to know when to take off the gas, how to know when to spit less, how to know when to spit more. Like there's a lot of things I'm still learning. I'm not afraid to admit that I'm still learning. There's a lot of things that a lot of people know how to do, right? Like, for example, Eminem is a fucking spellcaster. Eminem is very good with voice and fluctuation. 
That is the primary aspect in his skill set, vocal and fluctuation. Up, down, low pitch, high pitch, aggressive roar, take off the gas. He's very good with that. It's not necessarily about what he's saying. It's vocal and fluctuation. And I feel like he's the best at that, which most definitely makes people think he is extremely lyrical. When it's not necessarily lyrical, it's the fluctuation. Right? You feel me? All that shit, right? All that up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. You feel me? Boom. It's fire, right? Um, uh, Lil Wayne could have been higher up on the lyrical scale. I just think Lil Wayne spent too much time talking about how he the shit. And different variations of the shit. I'm the shit like a toilet. I have more shit on me than toilet paper. I'm the shit like number two. Diarrhea ain't had this much shit on the counter. Like it's just too many dookie lines. Like Wayne had a lot of dookie lines. Like a lot. Like a lot, like I could name at least 50. Like clean dookie lines, like boo boo. Like, this is facts, bro. I'm this shit like the toilet. It's just, he had a lot of dookie lines, like a lot, bro. Like plenty of just flat out dookie lines, like. But I ain't gonna front. I ain't gonna front. At one point in time, Lil Wayne was the best rapper on the planet at one point in time. We can't squad up Wayne is Thanos. Squad up Wayne the Carter. Squad up Wayne the Carter one Wayne is Thanos with the Infinity Gauntlet. Squad up Wayne and the Carter One Wayne is Thanos with the Infinity Gauntlet. He blew through everything. He was snapping on everything. Everything. My nigga, it was a time. Listen to me, bro. Let me get close to y'all. There was a time when niggas were scared to put their music out. This nigga, Lil Wayne, was snapping on R&B records. Lil Wayne dropped a mixtape, nigga. He didn't rapped over a motherfucking tank beat. Like, nigga, this tank. This nigga was doing Tyrese records. Man, this nigga did Boys to Men, Jodeci. My nigga, Garth Brooks. It didn't matter who dropped, my nigga. Your beat was getting got. What? He snapped on everything, bro. Thanos, my nigga. Squad up, Wayne. Carter one, Wayne was Thanos, my nigga. He snapped on everything, bro. What's y'all... My nigga, hold on. What's that song? I'm going to tell you what verse it was where I realized Lil Wayne was unstoppable. I'm going no, to tell you, and if you disagree, then you don't know Wayne. The ask your girl about me, she say that's delicious. I'm a fan of all bad bitches, and you need to stop fucking with them nasty. That verse. What verse, what song was that from? I can't remember the exact song, the name of the song. What, what song was that from? No, it was I. It was some beat he rapped over somebody else's beat, bro. It was Jay Z beat, right? Yeah, the one where he rapped over Maya and Jay song, bro. That shit. Oh my God, my nigga. 
I don't really know the. I can't really remember the shit, bro. I can't remember the words, bro. But the one when he rapped over Maya and J beat, my nigga. Oh my, my nigga. That's when I was like, this nigga the best ever, ever. Yeah, get like a yellow Lambo. Yeah, get like, like a yellow Rari. Yeah, get like a yellow 911. Yeah, get, bro, my nigga, Wayne. Can somebody... Oh, my nigga, hold on, bro. I, I can't even pull it up. I wish I had another phone or some shit. My nigga. I ain't gonna lie, my nigga. That Wayne from that song? Oh, it was over for everybody. That that Wayne from that specific song, it was over for everybody. That verse might go as one of the, the wildest. Like, if a nigga, that is the definition of snap. Like, that Wayne snapped, my nigga. It's Lil Wayne over the Jay-Z and Maya beat, bro. That Wayne literally snapped out of this world, right? Remind y'all, I'm speaking from when I was a lost nigga. So in today's time, it's not like it's super crazy. But back then when I was still like kind of lost and I wasn't really as smart as I am, my nigga, that Wayne was, I can't play it. My nigga, I don't got no way to play it, but I, ain't, I can't play it from my phone. We own the phone. Bro. But all right, so might as well get into this. Y'all want to know who my favorite rapper is, though? Like, I'm t like before I was conscious, though. I'm talking about back in when I was younger. You want to know who one of my favorite rappers is? Right. Nigga, Killer Cam. Nigga, Cameron is literally the GOAT to me. Cam the GOAT to me, my nigga. Like... Cam is the greatest lyrical, non-lyrical nigga ever. Killer. Killer is the greatest lyrical, non-lyrical nigga ever. Like, he ain't lyrical, but he is. Like, Killer. My nigga Cam had the game on lock, my nigga. Like, Killer season, my nigga. Killer, killer, killer. Purple haze, my nigga. I still got purple haze in the car, my nigga. Killer, can, 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 kill him. Arms up, touchdown, toaster strudels, coasters, noodles. Yo, Cam used to say anything, my nigga. Cam used to have a nigga on the floor crying. Nut on her head, nutmeg. I had a girl named Meg, nut on her head. She was seasoned, call it nutmeg. What the fuck said? Yo, Killer used to be snapping, my nigga. Killer used to, my nigga, I used to be on the floor like this shit funny, but it's hard as fuck, bro. Like, shoot, shoot, pop, pop, dead, dead, donkey rooster. Long hair, white girl in the house, Punky Brewster. Bruce, Bruce. There goes the goof troop. Plain and simple, hoop loop, hoop loop. Serial killer, fruit loops, the coop scoops. Ice cream, right dreams. Pipe dreams, the ice cream. There go the truck again. Oops, we out of luck again. Yo, Cam used to, my nigga, Cam used to be dummy snapping, my nigga. I used to be on the floor, bro. Bro, I used to be on the floor. Like, you, like I couldn't wait to hear what other wild shit he was going to say. Like, but it wasn't, it wasn't regular wild. Like, it was like, it was, it was, it was weak, but it was dope at the same time. Right? Like it was, it was weak, but it was like, it was fire though. Like it was like fire weak. Like what? Cam used to have a nigga dead, bro. 
What? Open up the trunk. What's that smell? Skunk, skunk. Smell stinky, stinky. Yo, he. I used to be on the floor. Shit, stink, stink. Skunk coat, mink, mink. Eyes closed, blink, blink. Hands wash, sink, sink. <laughs> Yo, I used to be on the ground. Hands wash, sink, sink. What the F is wrong? F and John, John F, Archibald, Johnny Cochran, Lawyer Jews, buy the case, case load, guns load, shoot the rocket, rocket shoot, harden step, euro step, step back, call the travel. I get called to travel, all the travels, lodge the travel, travel lodge. I was in the travel lodge marathon. Nipsey Hustle. <laughs> Yo, Cam used to be going ape shit, bro. But I'm going to tell you, right? I'm going to tell you, right? Like, no, I could never fuck with Jim Jones musically. I'm going to tell you why I could never fuck with Jim Jones musically. Jim Jones was the first rapper to spit a whole 16 bars in the ad lib. That nigga be like, when I'm rolling through Harlem, Eastside, Capo, running through the block, back block, Popo, Capo, run back, uh, come over here, call me up, Goonie Goo Goo. Jim Jones used to have a whole 16 bars worth of rapping in the ad lib. I used to be like, is this another song? Did they combine two songs together? Like, Jimmy, you got to chill, G. Bro, Jimmy used to have, bro, he used to have all type of talking in the ad. You know how, like, when you say something and then you got that little gap to the next word, he ignored that. If he got a little space, he going to have a whole conversation in the middle. In the middle of those, like, two bars, he got a whole nother conversation. Jim Jones, I would walk to the store while I was walking, see the people. Bro, he I have. I used to be like, you know who really bothered me when they rapped though? You know, I ain't even going to lie to y'all. You know who really, like, you know who really, really used to use the power of being the leader? Baby, why did Lil Wayne and them let Baby get on the records? Like, nope, nobody never told him. Like, yo, Baby, that that ain't it. Like, nobody never told Baby. Like, yo, Julie, one of y'all niggas, nobody told Baby. Like, yeah, that that ain't gonna go. My nigga baby get on the end of the beat and spit a 32. Trillion plus, platinum plaques, diamonds, VVS plus, plus, plushed out hotel, living, life lavish, billion dollar grill, chains, lavish, pillion plus, platinum plaques, trillion plus. Turk. Wayne, baby, Manny, friend, nobody gonna tell this nigga no. Ain't nobody gonna tell this nigga no. You know how you got that one homie in the studio that can't really rap, but you let him get on anyway. Like, man, just spit your verse. But you, you have all intentions to take it off. You got all, you know, we all got that one homie that ain't really good, but he fuck with everybody, so you just let him get on there, you feel me? But you you secretly, like, yeah, you got a verse open for somebody else. They just let baby stay on the... They let baby stay on the fight. They great. Yo, baby like a cold nigga. I bet Slim was in the background. That's my little brother. If he won't on the record, he won't on the record.
nigga. Baby was like, yes, I made it. Are we done or are we finished? Yo, bro. Some crazy shit be happening in the rap game, my nigga. No, Joel Santana, he was one of my favorite artists at one point in time. He was so unorthodox. Joel Santana, Joel Santana was one of the most unorthodox rappers I ever heard in my life. When I dump with the lead, and I jump in the bed, I'm gonna snuggle up. Nigga, t save me a spot, bitch ass nigga. I got next. I'm gonna roll it north to begin. I'm gonna just watch. You ain't gonna play? Nah. Why? There'd be weaker niggas than you there. You said it's gonna be wild, so. I'm oh. trying to get crossed over.